Last night, I had a dream that Mr. Beast sold me into sex slavery. If you're a parent and you've just heard me say that from your child's device, take it away from them. Give them the attention they need, you lazy mother Part four, let's graduate mediums. Where are the first three parts? I guess we'll never know. Draws Band Together is a road trip children's sing-along movie about rescuing Justin Timberlake's estranged brothers. It's a pretty good movie. This one is the third film in the cinematic Trolls franchise, which is based on those tiny little toys with the colourful hair. Trolls, trolleys, troll dolls, good luck trolls, damn trolls, damn dolls, whatever you call them, they were an immensely popular trinkets during the second half of the 20th century. An icon. Once the consumer base grew up and had children or grandchildren, DreamWorks acquired the film rights so they could make films under the pretense that the original consumer base might be able to reminisce their childhoods whilst their offspring lived it both generations being leached for capital and Charles band together knows that we know this do you like my pillow fort the idea that a lot of children's media is exploitative of their naivety of quality is fully calcified in our minds it's uh, concrete uh, consolidated but I think we need to address the emerging meta-awareness of recent children's media that is used to try to uh, subvert this critique. Ah, it's gonna be hard to separate the art from the artist. Being aware that your movie is more of a product than art does not negate the fact that your movie is more of a product than art. This is different from simply being self-aware of the mediums, crafting jokes that go over the heads of kids, using irony to critique an issue of society, or focusing on an issue specifically related with the medium, like brand placement. In Band Together, it feels like there's a synthesis of different elements of the these things going on at the same time. Let's talk about it. Part five, doing uh, media literacy. The awareness of artifice and trolls band together results in a confusing set of signs about what trolls wants to express legitimately, sincerely, and what it doesn't care about. For example, after Into the Spider-Verse in 2018, film journalism started talking about its art style and the steps animated films should take to diversify so that artists aren't constrained by studios to make three-dimensional, super bright, colorful, slick, plasticky hyper-realities that are saturated so by Illumination, Disney, or Spider-Verse's own Sony Pictures Animation. Since then, we've had a solid handful of results. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Bad Guys, Nimona, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, and that's just the films. I don't think Scott Pilgrim takes off would have been greenlit if it wasn't for the discussion sparked by Into the Spider-Verse. In the last five years, unique and diversified art styles have had a positive value judgment placed upon them. Our standards are so low that creativity full stop is good now. Trolls Band Together is predominantly the former popular 2010s hyper-stimulating art style, but it does try to adopt the diversification route. There are negative overall results of this, and there are positive ones too. In the film, the trolls travel through multiple realms, one of which is called the Hustle Dimension. Here, there are a bunch of irreverent or atypical art styles on display. It's as if Adult Swim got a hold of the film for a moment. A moment. We have exactly 31 seconds in the Hustle Dimension, and it's gone until a very brief moment during the climax. And yet Yet this was a huge part of the marketing materials for Trolls Band Together. It was in every trailer and the scene was distributed online before release. Now I wouldn't expect the full film to be this psychedelic seeming or visually incohesive but the emphasis of this scene in the run-up to the release was in genuine. Trolls Band Together wants to signal that it's innovative and new by having aesthetic acts that we've communally decided deserve positive value judgment but it doesn't commit to that signal. It's a very safe clinical insertion into the film compared to the more dominant, less visually distinct, yet equally meaningful places that the trolls go to. If the role of uh, sincerity in the arts was like uh, uh, holding a class, this film would be like the teacher's pet, um, like where we've asked a question and it's throwing its arms up into the air, whimpering, pick me, pick me. And we're, we're not, we're not, we're, we're not picking it. <laughs> Even though it has the right answer, it cares more about pleasing the teacher than contributing to the building of knowledge for the class. This scene is not useful, which is a little frustrating because there are other dimensions that have baseline more interesting properties to them. Those who live in these other dimensions have textures, uh, colors, and like how together they reflect light. Um, that kind of mimic the toys that they're based off of and this creatively contrasts from the trolls. Vacation Island is made of those decorative glass pebbles you find in old people's homes and their nautical themed bathrooms and it's home to soft hand puppet like creatures recalling the works of Jim Henson and Dr. Seuss. Heartthrob. Whoa, what is the key character trait for the troll that we find here? Heartthrob. How do we know this? Heartthrob. Writing. Meanwhile, Mount Rageous is a colorful metropolis overseen by an ominous dark sky. It's nighttime all the time. Mount Rageous is a 24 seven club. The only inhabitants are teenagers. Teenagers can be scary 
or they can seem cool. For children, I think nighttime activities like concerts and parties have an air of covert prestige to them, since kids are supposed to be asleep when these kinds of things are going on. DreamWorks accentuates this atmosphere in a similar way to Heartthrob. by throwing signal words at you instead of designing usable objects that communicate those signal words implicitly. Hold up, Dadaism? The population of Mount Rageous resemble hard plastic Betty spaghetti dolls and the brand's derivatives, which were popular in the early noughties. These are all pretty incidental contrasts compared to the hustle dimension. The hand puppets and Betty spaghetti still abide by the same frame rates, are animated with the same lividity, and follow the same uh, physics of the trolls continuity, I guess. But more importantly in these places, the autonomy of the trolls corporeal forms aren't altered like they are in the hustle dimension. The environments of these places aren't great, but it's the people that live in them that communicate meaning effectively. Focusing on the Mount Rageous dimension, the antagonists are consciously designed to be shiny and hard, because that better reflects the artifice in their behaviour and motivations, compared to the protagonists which are soft, with natural hair and voices. Trolls are comparably not fake. It's the same as in the first movie, where the antagonists are characterised with signals that society has deemed dirty and gross, while those qualities when depicting trolls are not present. Purpose distinctions are being made. The Trolls films other their protagonists through plot too. In Band Together we understand Jojo's bizarre digital circus and Captain Planet as the villains because they hide behind a veneer of performance. They are not in and of themselves talented so they sap the ability to sing from authentic trolls to grant them stardom. The Captain Planet guy is literally called Veneer. A solid message for a piece of children's media, right? Be your honest self, use skills that you have learned, let your art reflect that and don't steal the work of others. This functions even better in a music oriented film. This is a common topic in stuff about the music industry. I can understand why this might appeal to some of the new cast members who predominantly work as musicians. It makes me think though, did they see these messages and maybe the checks as more important than the root ickiness of transmorphing an unadaptable established IP toy line franchise into film um, or the majority of band together's 2010s hyper stimulating art style and incessant signs like vomiting rainbows butts farts um i just went to watch a scene for more examples of like immature visual gags and uh, just got sucked right in in the scene where they introduce the bad guys they can't hold a single shot for more than two seconds i counted they have to zoom in or add some special effect to keep you engaged and I think this just proves my point. Trolls Band Together explicitly references how it doesn't want to be considered a product more than a piece of art by criticizing artifice, but then it signals the same implicit qualities of films that prioritize retention and opportunities for merchandising as if it was actually a product more than a piece of art. In this age of oscillating between what's valued but not necessarily profitable and what's valued for means of profit, films like Trolls Band Together can attempt to succeed. The key word here is attempt. The bourgeois products cannot masquerade as proletariats by exercising proletariat values, for that would put the system creating the product at risk. In making this observation, I am giving the impression that I am pro-working class and pro-art as opposed to pro-commodification. And that's true. I am working class and I value art, so I try to support movements that defend and maintain those things. But what if I didn't heed those words? To simplify, you can say uh, fake is bad and mean it by not acting fake. Or you can say fake is bad and not mean it by acting fake. By pointing both of these out, you signal yourself as conscious, aiming to build on the discourse around how fake is bad, promoting the idea that fake is bad, and it's likely you are sincere in doing that. Charles Band Together makes this observation, seeming conscious of and aiming to build on the discourse around how fake is bad, promoting the idea that fake is bad, but it still acts fake. This could be potentially recursive until it is utterly impossible to tell the difference between performed and sincere sentiment. To extrapolate, uh, I'm starting to see online, and I noticed it in myself as well, um, an awareness when talking about social issues where different facets of identity are held as standard or elevated above others, um, and it comes across in like uh, performing recognition that you could be performative. Someone can say it's performative to question your social positioning without actually trying to be socially conscious. To seem like they're honestly trying to be socially conscious themselves when in reality they hypocritically don't take the time to reckon with themselves. This is clearly inspired by and born from second order observation. 
It is impossible to, but I'm going to try and end that potential recursiveness by outlining where to start on observing performed social consciousness by openly reckoning with myself. You'll just have to take my word for it that I'm trying to be earnest and um, not about to perform it without further action being taken outside of the context of this video. I am a man, a white boy, and I benefit from multiple intersecting systems. I've hurt people the way those benefits have shaped my behaviour. I don't even know some of these people, or worse, I do, and we've not spoken about it. Not that they're obligated to, but these systems can kill people have killed people. Obviously a behavior or a conversation is not going to kill someone unless it's literally facilitating premeditation. But displaying moment by moment ignorance or fully embracing societally attributed benefits or contributing to a discourse molds perceptions of systems and people and that can inform behavior that is conscious of privilege in good and dangerous ways. As someone that lives in and benefits from a country that has, for example, objectified various outgroups for at least a thousand years, or been blissfully ignorant of how it has funded the wiping out of various outgroups for at least a thousand years. Anything I say about objectification or G word rhymes with coincide is going to be tainted with my context. So when I say Amy Schumer's meta-awareness or performative activism is grating, I'm not overcompensating my boo-hoo white guilt in being blissfully ignorant whilst I was growing up and still in part today, or secretly being misogynist, or harnessing an image of wokeness or whatever. I'm saying it because I find it grating. Schumer voices Velvet, the second of the two antagonists from Trolls Band Together. She is an American comedian and I don't really care for her art, mainly because I don't care about comedy as a genre. In my taste, I value it more as a tasteful embellishment to other genres, but I'm not gonna fault people for liking through and through comedies. You do you. But I digress. On October 27, Schumer reposted some words on her social media about calls for a ceasefire where the local Palestinian population are suffering from and trying to fight against oblivion administered by the state of Israel. In this post, the author, actor and vocal Zionist Brett Gelman of Stranger Things fame observes others' condemnation of the state of Israel, yet skips around the words to explicitly condemn it himself. As a Jewish person, here and in other posts across her social media profiles, Schumer wants to emphasise the anti Jewish angle of conversation about what's going on over there. Okay, anti-Semitism has had a legitimate violent presence in history, not just in the most pertinent example of anti-Semitism that comes to mind, but in present day white supremacy and the colonial nations that are complicit with it. This is a systemic issue. The violence of Hummus can't be directly compared to the violence of the state of the Israeli government because in the case of the latter, violence has seeped deep into the how the state functions and exacts power. Israel doesn't want to exist if it can't destroy an entire people, and its consciousness of this motivation, and more importantly its agency, is carefully omitted from the words that Schumer endorses. This also goes for the letter entitled No Hostage Left Behind, addressed to the current President of the United States, thanking him. Th thanking him? For funding Israel's G word? Wait, who signed this? Justin Timberlake? Eric Andre? This isn't a blacklist. I don't have the authority on how we should value humans. I think some people were either goaded into it or didn't know about its propagandistic nature, like Emma Seligman, director of Shiva Baby and Bottoms, who has been vocally pro-Palestine. You've got to pay attention to what people consistently talk about. Both Schumer and Seligman have consistently used their platforms to contribute to different dialogue, former showing very little compassion and the latter being a bit more open-minded. Jonathan Glazer used the Oscars to remind the industry about its complacency with the current occupation. I'm specifically avoiding the G word because I know if I throw it around freely, the Algo won't let people have a conversation with me, but No Hostages Left Behind specifically avoids the G word because it denies that G word is happening. It confuses me that someone like Eric Andre would sign No Hostages Left Behind when he's also signed Artists for Ceasefire, which the Israeli government has staunchly opposed for its empathy or lack of dehumanizing apathy for Palestinians. Seligman signed it too. Schumer and Timberlake did not. This ambivalence emerging from the voice cast of Trolls Band Together is intriguing i guess which brings us to brozone part seven brozone what happened to part six you just watched it you just watched it brozone is one prodigious phantasm in the troll cinematic continuity in the first film justin timberlake's character segregates himself from the rest of troll society because trolls sing and sing and kill my grandma okay i ate my grandma in trolls band together this is partially retcon uh 
instead Justin Timberlake secluded himself because he missed his brothers who abandoned him because they didn't want to be the boy band Brozone anymore. So uh, there's that and then there's the voice cast of Brozone which is what compelled me to make this video. The obvious metatextual elements to Brozone is the parallel between a part of Justin Timberlake's legacy as a member of boy band NSYNC and Brozone being an extension of Timberlake's character Branch. But the voice and singing cast of Brozone is not in sync. Eric Andre, Kid Cudi, Troy Sivan and Davy Dix. Dream blunt rotation if I've ever seen one. If you know all of these artists' individual works, then you would be surprised that they would sign up for this film. I can see Timberlake doing it. I'm certain he sold his soul in the form of music in the past, whether he was a literal child under NSYNC or a man of the woods. But the rest? How could someone who made this <laughs> perform this? Bestiality is, it's probably underrated. Or this. Who killed Hannibal? Who killed Hannibal? Or make this. I don't for pain anymore. Or this. Or this. Everybody want to kill a moment for the moment. Home, grace, come home. Femurs all swing on a ceiling like a chandelier. Be involved with this. Somewhere in the world, an unexpecting individual will type Davy Diggs better place into a search engine and not get the troll soundtrack, but get this. They have the same name. Did nobody check this? Now, obviously the Brozone voice actors are only associated performers in the song. They didn't actually play a part in like composing it. All they did was learn the lyrics and words, use their vocal talent in a recording booth and collect their checks. So it's unlikely any of these guys had to interact with one another or other cast members and do the introspection that comes with the possible cognitive dissonance of working jointly, intimately with people that have very opposing attitudes to art, selling art, and also the process of marginalizing or outright exterminating people. With the exception of Diggs, because he's not a very online person, there is, although pitifully small, evidence that the deuteragonist members of Brozone are against the total eradication of a people. These vessels of empathy are feeble and very easy to post or perform, but like I said earlier, it's a matter of consistent monitoring of actual activity that we as a communal entity need to enact. It's not even something that requires that much dedication, just like, consciousness. Okay, saying consciousness sounds like hive mind mentality is just an inherent part of the life experience. I don't mean to sound like we should have our Twitter fingers on the council button ready to strike at any moment or even integrate the behavior of famous and rich people into our lives. Don't do that. Accountability is a very different topic that lots of people have defined well. The thing with Brozone is that its cast have all at some point submitted themselves to the direction of a corporation guided by profit rather than the more ideal system of having faith in the direction of a leading artist guided by whatever the essence of art is. Evidently, sometimes a job is just a job to these guys. They use the act of translating humanity into tangible form to create something that is uh, very not human. And that's sometimes okay. People gotta live. It's just ironic though that the something in this case incorporates critique of the very kind of artifice that it exists as. The kind of commodity malformed to have the lowest common denominator type of appeal, which directly contrasts from much of the work that the Brozone voice cast have individually made and shown interest in. The dissonance between what the Brozone voice cast have done for DreamWorks and what they have done elsewhere has led me to believe that they do not feel connected to the value that they are producing. If they consider trolls band together as having an amount of subjective value to it that is proportional to what they individually labored i could understand that if they stepped in worked and got out of there then they probably don't hold it as high as those examples that i showed just moments ago each released under their own names compare this to the selectively moral or flagrantly ignorant members of the voice cast that had more involved roles in trolls band together much like how they can easily suppress their humanity for the political benefit of a state that wants to represent an entire religion they can suppress their humanity to dedicate their labor to something this is more pertinent than going npc mode at your retail job because the thing that they are suppressing their humanity for is supposed to create an object that encapsulates humanity. We call it art. The thing I said about Mr. Beast at the start of this was not a joke. It was horrible. I woke up in a cold sweat and everything. Like, 
it happened. Why do I feel the need to include it in my digital footprint though? Why did I need to subject you to that horrible imagery? Why did I choose to open a discussion about a children's movie with it? Am I demeaning the millions of actual cases of human trafficking by saying that I had a nightmare about it? Someone not of the typical demographic of victims? I mean, now at least. If I lived in ancient Greece, I probably would fit right in. But that's besides the point. <laughs> in the era of content creation, it is necessary to hook the viewer in. And this is usually done with loud noise. Our chef was just murdered! I just bought this train! But it got old. Very quickly. The current meta is frequent cuts that don't even need to efficiently summarize the video that well. They just need to stand together as a stylized intro to the subject matter of the video or the speaker's soul. But mostly it's to hook you in. Formally, this resembles the editing of Trolls Band Together or maybe the editing of Trolls Band Together resembles the kinds of videos that its audience watches. It has a similar effect to the constant stimulation of excessive quick scrolling, which is a word I just made up. The Chena Pen brothers do this rapid audiovisual cuts thing very well. Like them, I too wanted to cultivate a brand image of being chaotic and stimulating, so I dedicated portions of my first few exercises into video editing to cracking like bad quips. The kind that you catch barehanded mid-flight so you can stuff it into your phone as quickly as possible like it's a tweet or something. Yes, I'm jacking your steez, but only until I find my own aesthetic vision. I'm working on it. In realizing this, I decided let's push it further. Let us engage in the virgin street lamps have bombs in them to Chad Mr. B sold me into sex slavery pipeline. Zero to 100, baby. Or not. This stick doesn't authentically represent myself. I'm just mimicking the cadence and erratic sentence to sentence subject topping of someone that I look up to and not like the actual reason why I look up to them, which is their passion for topics that are important to me and their labor in making it accessible and invigorating for others. Outrageous and arguably overstimulating hooks don't represent what I want to do. They're a method of audience retention and I, I don't know how much I like that. In fact, I failed in jacking your steez. I don't sound anything like that heathen at all, and I'm glad. If it sounds like I'm mad at anyone, I am. Uh, myself. Instead, let's pull the reins in the opposite direction. Zero to uh, minus 100. I'm not going to sit at the top of a mountain drinking freshly plucked tea leaves, preaching about the benefits of slow living or whatever, because that's not me either. Let's just see who I am over the course of these videos. Who am I? Do I know? In being explicit about my awareness of my image and my digital footprint, I'm moulding my image as being so. In being explicit about my awareness of this awareness, I'm moulding my image as being so. As being meta. And I don't know if I want that either, but I feel compelled to be so in order to show you how insanely complex it is to, and how many questions need answering to justify the balance of the artistic, raw expression of personhood versus feeding the whims of the system that's facilitating and or platforms that expression. I, I, I don't know. Pirate trolls, drink water, Free Palestine.